Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome to Snippet 19. Wow, where does the time go? So we're on Snippet 19. As usual, using Pink Frog card, four inches by six inches. We always use the same piece of card. And I'm going to begin by using the Bulb Gazette stamp, stamp set 907. Now I want you to make this look a little bit more random. So I'm using my Versamark watermark stamp pad. And what I want you to do is just not think about where you're inking. And what I want you to do is just go over the background very randomly. So just using different parts of the stamp. So try not to get the whole stamp, just try to use different parts of it. And what I want you to do is just lift the edges of the stamp every time you use it, because it'll just give you you can see there's just a bit of black ink there. It just gives you a more random effect. And I want you to do that all over the page. And then when you've... I want you to stamp literally random all over the page. And then I want you to sprinkle your image with white embossing powder. And then heat that white embossing powder. But can you see how random that is? It, if you do it that way... It makes an A7 stamp that is this size, it makes it look completely different. And you can see I've just hit different areas with that stamp. But what you need to do is make sure that you curl like that so that you get a different area of the stamp. Okay, so what I want us to do now is I want us to take Prize Ribbon Distress Oxide Ink or any blue that takes your fancy. I'm going to use Prize Ribbon Distress Oxide Ink and I'm using that because it's a lovely rich dark blue and I just think that'll be really lovely against that white embossing. Turn your card round and add more. Now add plenty of ink, you're just braving that on and you can just lift the brayer, just lift and flick, sort of just flick. Okay, so that's all you're doing. Nice, simple technique. Don't worry about the ink that's on your brayer at the moment. And let's just wipe that up, just so that we've got the mess out of the way. Let's just give that a wipe. And then what I'm going to do is just take some kitchen roll Make sure you're using a clean area and just spritz lightly with water. And then I just want you to take off the excess ink. Now you can see it removes a fair bit of ink. So make sure you use a clean piece of kitchen roll and just wipe over. I then want you to go to a dry piece of kitchen roll and give that a polish. So just polish your piece of card, just so that you've got that. But look at that. You wouldn't know that was an A7 stamp, would you? Just a fantastic background. And then just spritz that with water just to give yourself a few splotches of ink and leave that on one side. What I'm going to do then is take stamp set 573, House of Butterflies. And I'm actually going to use the house so I'm actually using this image here, okay? And then I'm going to stamp that with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. Let's just remove that excess ink. And I want you to stamp this five times. I don't know how many I'm using, so I've stamped it five times. And then I've cut that out. So you literally cut your image out. Let's just clean that area up a little bit. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add these to our background. So I'm just going to literally add a little tiny bit of dimension. I'm not going to add too much dimension. Now your card, my card is a little wet underneath, but that's fine. 
because I've now got a few splatters which I want on the card, which just works beautifully, which you'll see when you create your card. And I'm using the pin flare or your ultra thick gel medium because that allows me to move should I not get them quite in the right place. So what I'm doing is I'm just layering that image down and I've got five of those just because I like the idea of an odd number. Might tuck that one in like so. And this is why it's good because sometimes when you lay out things, you can see that you need to move them along a bit. So this is why it's always good to use an adhesive that will allow you to move. So let's move that over there. So this is why I use the pin flare. Okay, and let's add that there. There we go. Just bring this up initially. So it just allows me to move that project just so that you can see there. Then what I'm going to do is take my other A7 stamp, which is 908, and I've stamped the little bird and cut him out. So I've literally just cut the bird as is. And I'm just going to add the little bird just to the end here. And you'll see why I didn't add any colour initially. I just add that there, like so. The reason I didn't add any colour initially is because I wanted to see where my houses would end up. So I'm just going to take some of that water, make sure that I'm working clean. And then I'm going to take some of the prize ribbon. And I'm just going to take a little touch of that. And I'm just going to start just sort of a little bit of dark here. And I'm just going to blend that out. So I'm using quite a bit of water initially. So take a little bit of the colour and you're sort of just adding a wash initially. So start at the one end and you can see why I didn't add the colour because now I know exactly where the houses are ending up. So it works quite nicely. So I've just at the moment, it's just a wash. And we're just going to leave that just as a wash at the moment, just so that you can see the little bird on there. I'm then going to take from the same stamp set, the House of Butterflies, and I'm going to use the word dream. You can use the word home if you wish, but I'm going to use the word dream. Try not to get everything everywhere. Which is easier said than done. I'm trying to put the stamp back. There we go. Let's stay out of that water. I don't want to get rid of that ink, that prize ribbon ink just at the moment. So just take that dream sentiment and we'll just add. Because this pop of white from the sentiment will just work nicely with our background. Just going to cut that down so it isn't quite so big. Nearly lost where my card was. And I'm then just going to add the dream sentiment here. But before I do that, I'm just going to add some black Posca pen to the edges. There we go just so that that pops a little bit. I'm just going to wipe that black up because you know what I'm like. 
I just don't like to have any black ink. And just add a little bit of adhesive. I'm just going to add that dream there. Let me just show you, just so you can see that dream there. And then what I want you to do is I now want you to take some time and just add a darker layer of colour just to the edges of that house. So just make it a little bit darker towards the edge of that house. And what I want you to do is I want you to allow it to dry the actual ink, the blue ink, allow it to dry. And then I want you to go back in again. So what I'm going to do now is add some splatters of white. Just add some splatters of white just over the top. But it's really important that you go in several times and build this layer of colour. So just keep building that layer of colour. And you can use your water and you can just blend that out a little bit more. Just keep blending that out just so that you've got no edges. Okay, let's not move that. So this is snippet 19, just so that you can see. Just so that you can see that. You can see that background. See the little beard on there. Just so that you can see. Lots of detail in there. And then, have I just got... What I'm going to do then is take a little bit of candied apple let me just check my time. Just spritz your brush so that you're working clean. And I'm just going to take a bit of that candied apple, which is a red. And I'm just going to add a little bit of red. And I'm just going to add a few splatters of the red. So take a little bit more of the candied apple. Just spritz that with water. I'm just going to add a few splatters of the red. There we go. Just so that you can see that. And what you could also do is add some glossy accents to the number three, just so that rises a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is when this is dry, I'm going to add another layer of red. And then just to finish, because it will be a little bit stronger, I've got a red Posca pen. And that will be a little bit more of a vibrant red. So that you've got those two-tone reds. And I can just go in with my Posca pen and just add that red to the beard. Because that red will be a little bit more vibrant as well. So that is snippet number 19. So I shall see you all soon for snippet 20. Love to all. Bye for now.